Hello, you are watching the Pure Passion Biz Podcast with Akua Hines, and I am your host, Akua Hines. And today I'm very pleased to be interviewing Anne Foistel. Uh, Anne works as a copywriter, editor, and author, and she is the author of the book, Our Favorite Movies, How Films Affect Our Mental Health. Very excited to uh, talk about some important issues and how um, our entertainment that we receive can actually be teaching us lessons that we need to know. Hello, Anne. It's wonderful to be with you today. Thank you so much. Hello. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you so much. It's a joy to um, talk with another writer. Um, I uh, myself um, am a writer and it's always a joy to talk with another movie lover and another author. So movies provide us, the audience, with entertainment and an opportunity to escape from our lives for an hour or two hours or possibly longer. Movies can also teach us lessons that we need to learn. So what are the three most impactful lessons that you've learned from movies and which movies were they? Oh, okay. That's a great question. Um, I think um, three movies. The first movie I would say is Fried Green Tomatoes. And what that movie taught me um, was to always be yourself and stay true to yourself. Um, I think that's true for various characters in in the movie that they learn that, you know, they have to do what they want to do. They have to care about who they care about and they have to be who they need to be. Um, huh. for, for the, uh, have you seen that movie? You know, it's interesting because I remember when that movie came out, I remember all of the advertisements. I did not see that movie. I I just didn't. And I'm glad that you brought it up because I think that'll be on my next list. <laughs> I'll be able to, you know, thank goodness for technology that we're able to, um, to access so many films just within seconds. And we can also access them from our public libraries, of course, just putting in a plug for the library there. Mm -hmm. But um, that is a great suggestion. Thank you. What about the second movie? That inspired. The second movie I would say is the movie Inside Out, um, which is a movie. Have you seen that one? I have not. No. Okay. Uh, who stars? Uh, in we, we've got all kinds of movies for you to watch <laughs> and for the audience to watch. So Inside Out is a Pixar movie, and um, I saw a little meme about it, and it says, "What if feelings had feelings?" So basically, it's about the five. Uh, emotions inside of 11 year old girl's head so the girl moves from <clears throat> minnesota to san francisco and is sort of what does she go through on that move so you see the emotions in her head and then joy and sadness get lost in her head so what you learn from the movie <clears throat> which i already had understood but i think i understood it better was how important sadness is how and how much we need all of our emotions to be complete and and contented people because we need to sometimes be sad in order to appreciate the happiness. How interesting. I have never looked at it from that lens before because I think sadness is something that we all try to avoid. We all want to escape. Um, never really thought of sadness teaching us something that, teaching us about joy helping us to value joy better. Mm -hmm. oh, thank mm -hmm. you so much for that film suggestion and for yeah. sharing your thoughts on that. What about one more movie? Sure. Um, let me think. So a third movie, um, let's go with A League of Their Own, uh, which is a movie for those of you who don't know, is about um, the real life story of the all girls American baseball league uh, that was uh, that happened during World War II. So the um, you know the men had gone off to war. There was no men's baseball going on, so they decided to take on um, to create this this women's baseball league. Um, so it was the story of that. So I would say um, that that really shows you the importance of accepting your family. Um, and understanding your family members 
Um, so there's two sisters in it who really go against each other. They're very opposite. One is more cool and collected and is everybody's favorite. The other one is more hot-headed and emotional and doesn't get along with everybody. And I can sort of see myself um, in the hot-headed, emotional piece and my sister in the more calm, collected, popular piece. So it's sort of how do you come together with somebody in your family who's completely opposite of you and still love them and understand them and get along with them? Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'll leave it their own. I do remember when that came out as well. I don't think I saw the entire movie. I think I just saw clips of it. Madonna's in that movie. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Right. But I remember it was well received. I remember mm -hmm. it was a very well received film. I'm going to have to add that to my list as well. I love this. This is fantastic. You're giving <laughs> so many ideas, Anne. <laughs> Thank you for Yay. sharing about that. And because we need more movies in our lives, not less. That's how I feel. <laughs> and all those movies I cover in more detail in the book. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is very good to know. And what, um, speaking of your book, and we want to learn more about that. What inspired your decision to write your book, Our Favorite Movies, How Films Affect Our Mental Health? Sure. So I myself have my own mental health issues. So I have bipolar disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. And I go in detail into sort of what I, I have experienced over my lifetime of, of dealing with my different symptoms and issues. I wanted for, you know, to sort of normalize what I've gone through what millions of other people go through. Um, I've wanted to put my story out there. I've always wanted to write a book. It's something I've wanted to do since I was a child. I've always been a writer. Um, so that the the writing of the book was something that was was sort of a go for me day one. I always wanted to do that. So I wanted to talk about my mental health and then movies have always been there for me. They've always been a joy for me, a way to escape, a way to laugh and cry. You know, they've just always been in instrumental to me. And I've watched so many of them for years. You don't even understand how many movies I've been watching. So, um, yeah, so they'll just sort of put everything together. And, and uh, that's where the book came out. That sounds like it could be a movie in itself. What led you to create <laughs> your um, book, Project and Journey? And uh, you know, I'm so glad that you brought up um, how movies can be there for us. Um, you know, there are, I read a statistic years ago that there are about 450 million people worldwide who are dealing with a mental condition themselves. And that's an estimated number. And of course, uh, many mental health conditions are hereditary. So, I mean, they're not going away, right? They pass down um, uh, through the generations. And I think it's very valuable to find tools that can help to handle and to, to cope with a mental condition, um, to help move forward and to help just to understand, I think that movies help us to understand that we're not alone. There are other people who are going through the same thing. And I feel the same way about books too. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always been a huge uh, reader. I love movies and I, and it's not just movies that um, help me to cope as well. It's also television shows, specifically television shows that have characters dealing with some of the issues that I might be going through myself. And so Yes, you know, it's not just entertainment. Um, there's a purpose. They are tools. Movies are tools. I, I look at movies, media as tools to help to educate people as well as entertain. Edutainment, just a little portmanteau. <laughs> um, in this past, um, this past Monday um, here in Canada, we had Victoria Day, which is a holiday for us. I know that you're in the States and that you're going to have Memorial Day um, coming up um, this upcoming Monday. Your Memorial Day is um, Monday holiday is always the week after our Victoria Day Monday holiday. Oh, okay. So I wonder, do you have any um, special movies lined up to watch or... Not yet, not making any plans. Not, no, not yet. I, I do have to get some work done actually on Monday. <laughs> so it's not an all play day for me, unfortunately. Those of us, some of us who have our own businesses are 
not necessarily taking the day off on Monday. I know it sort of depends on the person, but uh, I'm right. I'm actually working on an interesting book um, about mindset, about on discovering your sort of discovering a new reality for yourself. So that sounds that's, fascinating. That's what the book. Um, the title isn't for sure, for sure, but uh, it, it's it's about discovering um, discovering your own reality and 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 creating your own reality. Is this a book that you're writing or that you're editing or editing. working? Editing. Okay, all right. Well, that's pretty exciting. So, uh, viewers, be sure to watch that information. Watch out for that um, when you follow Anne on social media, and we're gonna let Tara. Uh, links be there in the video description as well. We're going to post those links. Um, they will be there for you to see as well. I wanted to ask you, what do you think that, um, so do you recommend that people read the book that a movie is based on? What do you think about that? And do you feel that reading the book will make the movie experience disappointing and vice versa? Um, sure. I think, I think, you know, it, it sort of depends, but I tend to enjoy um reading the book first and then seeing the movie um some and, and you never know for sure the way they're going to do the movie and some movies have completely different endings and a lot of different details than what the book was um that's true for tv shows based on movies as well i don't know if you've seen kindred or read the book kindred and no oh okay so kindred is really interesting it's about um, the in the book, it was written in the I believe, the seventies, seventies or eighties. No, nineteen eighty four. Okay. Um, it's about um, a black woman who is um, pulled back in time um, to the mid eighteen hundreds, and she has to save this white ancestor of hers oh. from dying. And she keeps being pulled back. It's, you know, it's a science fiction. She keeps being pulled back in time. And then she's basically forced to live as a slave for part of the time that she's pulled back. Wow. And then she goes back to the present. And in the present, she has a white husband. And then she accidentally takes him with her to the past. That sounds so, fascinating. Yeah, it's 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 on. So the TV show is on Hulu, called okay. so it's Kindred. Um, but I I really enjoyed. There's only one season, unfortunately. They canceled out after the first season. Mm -hmm. um, but it's I thought it was really and it was it's an update because it was written you know in the 80s. So they updated it for the current era. That sounds so fascinating. I'm glad that you mentioned that to me. So I'm gonna have to look into that. I um. I'm not really into science fiction myself, but this sounds pretty intriguing. So I might have to take a look at that. Um, and it's interesting that you, um, and you said that was based on a book? Yeah, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, who's uh, one of my like top three favorite authors of all time. Very cool, very cool. I, I like, I myself, I feel that reading the book can be helpful. But sometimes when I do that, watching the movie is, is a letdown because they let mm -hmm. out, they, they haven't, mm -hmm. they've left out some important details that details that I felt were important for me to understand the characters when I was reading the book. But then when I've had situations where I've watched the movie first, um, I didn't feel a need to read the book. I felt like the movie gave me a complete understanding. Um, during the Victoria Day holiday, I had a movie marathon, basically. Uh, they, I was watching several movies in a row. And, and a couple of those movies were based on plays. And so I, I thought, oh, how interesting. Um, but the movie satisfied me so much that I just don't feel the need to pick up the script for the play or to see it in a play format or to read, you know, to read it. I just, I was very happy with that. So there's always a debate going on. Don't you agree about whether or not you should read the book first and then watch the movie or watch the movie first and then read the book. So maybe. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. There's definitely a debate. Um, and uh, 
I think a lot of times we have to sort of let each thing be its own art form. Mm. You know, the, the idea that with a book, it's going to be more descriptive. It's got more time to, to work around the idea. Um, but with a movie, it's so much more visual. Um, and there's only so much time you have in a movie. So um, sort of letting each thing be its own thing. I know I used to have more trouble with getting frustrated about how much a movie had, but I think, I don't know, it took me some time to sort of accept that these are completely different art forms. While they're both about stories, they tell stories in such different ways, they just have to, you got to allow each one to be it, its own thing. No, and I really hadn't thought about it quite like that before, but I want to thank you for sharing that uh, very valuable advice and insight because it's true. And we do need to appreciate that different art forms have their own unique place and we should just appreciate them as they are. That's great advice. I'm going to remember that now. I'm not going to make any more comparisons. I'm just, <laughs> going, to accept, <laughs> I'm just going to accept the art form as it is. Um, what do you think that an audience member should look for in a movie? And what is the ideal movie experience that someone should feel? after they watch a film, what do you think that we should want to feel? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I personally think that we should just feel what we feel, you know, as far as we want to feel or we should feel or anything like that, you know, just going into it and just allowing ourselves to be in the movie. I mean, that's one, one of the things I think is super helpful for us when, if we want to, really get the most out of an experience and and get the most out of how a movie can help us mental health wise is just to watch the movie and allow it to happen um and not get distracted by our phone or or different things you know trying to do chores and trying to do five different things while we're watching a movie just watch the movie just allow it to sort of wash over us and just be there with it Mm, that's very important to consider. It's so true. And I saw, I recently, uh, just a couple of days ago, actually, I saw Book Club, the next chapter, the sequel. Mm. Um, and I saw the, uh, the first movie, I think it was released in 2018. Um, and so now it's 2023. So I mean, that's five years later. And I really appreciated the cinematography. That's something that I... I'm always just looking for, I'm looking for great directing, I'm looking for great cinematography, but more importantly, I'm looking for a really well-written script. You know, the dialogue, the dialogue and the way it's delivered, that's what's so key for me. But if that dialogue, if that witty dialogue isn't necessarily there all the time, then yes, um, blow me away with the cinematography <laughs> and just give me beautiful views. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that we're all looking for different things, um, but I would like to think that we always want to leave a movie thinking, well, that was that was a worthwhile experience. Gave me an hour, two hours of just being able to really understand what was going on. I think it's disappointing when we go to a movie and at the end of the movie, we don't understand what it was about. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Um... I'm trying to think. I've I, a lot of times when I don't understand what a movie's about, it's almost like I'll not watch it because <laughs> or I won't finish it because I'm so like frustrated with what's going on in the movie. Um, I guess I'm trying to think of what the last movie that was like that where I was like, what just happened? Um yeah, I I, I don't know if there's one in particular that I've seen recently, there's definitely, um, yeah, I think I tend to, one of the things that I do before I see a movie <laughs> is I tend to um, research it, you know, try to figure out what is it about, did it get good reviews, that kind of thing. Um, and then um, I usually find out what it's about before I watch it. I I usually do that too, but it's interesting because sometimes um, there are movies 
that I've seen where the reviews were great, but I didn't necessarily agree. I just wasn't very keen on the movie. And then there are other movies I've watched through the reviews were not all that stellar, but I really enjoyed the movie. I found lovable moments, right? That I really enjoyed. Oh, I was just thinking, so I, I'm part of this group called Films of Hope, where there's a group of us um, who live all over the country and also some, one person's in England. Um, and we watch a movie on our own and then we get together and we discuss it. And what we do is we vote on, like people will, before we watch the movies, we vote on which movies we're going to watch together. Okay. So the movie that was picked was not my choice, but was Bicycle Thieves, which is an Italian movie from, I believe, 1948. Hmm. And it's basically about a man who in the 40s, um, has gotten this job and and at that point um, in Italy there were very few jobs to be had it was very depressed economy it was hand to mouth just really hard and this guy needs a bicycle for this job that he's given and then his bicycle is stolen and then pretty much the whole movie is trying to figure out where the bicycle is so Okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Actually, I love watching movies from the, the 1930s, especially the pre-code films and the movies from the 40s, which, of course, a lot of them had World War II war themes. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I assume that in Italy with this script, it's because of, it was after the war, you said 1948, right? That mm -hmm. the economy was so um, depressed. I'm assuming that's part of the reason why. But just to think, a, a whole movie about, finding a bicycle and yeah. was there more going on i mean was it more than just a bicycle or was it <laughs> there was i'm sure i'm sure that, that once i go into my group and the people who picked it will be like yeah so there were all these themes and these are the reasons why you know the, they chose this theme and and these are the reasons why this this movie is so famous and wonderful i i i'm i don't know i, I i'm more apt to be watching movies like from my childhood and older like 1980s and older i'm not i mean there's certain movies that i really love that were came out before i was born like the snake pit from the 1930s is a great movie about mental health um but uh yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm usually am not a huge fan of the 30s and 40s movies and this was definitely not an exception to the rule <laughs> i just didn't know i didn't know if there was more to it that I wasn't getting but anyway and, and and I wasn't getting why this was so important but I think maybe I also need to know more about Italian history in order to get the movie yeah and that's a, a very good point that it is good to know what's going on at the time when we're um whether we're reading a book um, from a certain time period or whether we're watching a movie um, from a certain time period because there are things that people from back then would understand what's going on without needing a little you know, context, but things that we may not know, right? So it, it is good. Um, it's, a, it's a great tip um, to do a little research whenever possible. Sometimes we just were not able to do that research. Sometimes whenever we can, it would be good. And that's where um, movie reviews can be helpful because it's, a lot of times the reviewer will in their written review provide that background info that we need in order to really understand the film um, to the best of our abilities. Um, and do you feel that um, being a writer yourself affects the way that you view movies in a way that might be different than a the typical audience member? And if so, how? Well, maybe, um, you know, obviously movies are written. And even though I do nonfiction, um, even though I write nonfiction, um, and most movies are fiction stories, I think, you know, I have, for me, I sort of, I have less, um, less ability to deal with poor writing. Mm -hmm. I get sort of snobbish. <laughs> I get a little snobbish <laughs> if it's not, if it's written sloppily or poorly. Um, I would say that would be the main thing where I have high standards for movies 
Um, so I, I, I get that inner snob is like, oh, this isn't very good. Why am I watching this? Why do people like this? Rah, 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 rah. So. <laughs> no, I, I totally understand. I feel the same way. If a, if a movie's poorly written, I, I don't know. I just want to turn the page <laughs> or turn it <laughs> off or it. leave the theater. It, it's true. It's true. writing perfect. does make a difference. <laughs> And lastly, Anne, I wonder, you know, what is, in your opinion, the most underrated movie that you've ever seen? And what do you want people to know about it? Ooh, underrated movie. That's a good question. Um, let me see. There are so many. Um, I'm going to go with Joe versus the Volcano. Okay. So Joe versus the Volcano is a movie um, that I also talk about in the book. And it is um, a pairing of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan that most people don't know about. Mm -hmm. So if you're Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan fan, you're going to love it. And the idea is that there is a man who um, thinks he's dying and he's offered the chance to jump in a volcano um, but live in the lap of luxury before he jumps in the volcano. And jumping in the volcano will appease the gods of this um, of this island. Wow. And so um, basically it's his journey to this volcano and meeting three women who are all different characters, but are all played by Meg Ryan. Oh, so are they characters like a, a fairy or a, like a ghost from the future or past? No. Present? Thank no, you. they're just three different women um, with different hairstyles. Two of them are sisters, but they're all played by Meg Ryan. How interesting. That does sound very interesting. And uh, what time period was this film? Uh, um, so it came out in 1990 and it was present day 1990. Okay. Um, it's It was sort of a magical realism movie. So, you know, based in the real world, but with sort of magic elements to it, you know, jumping in a volcano and things like that. So, okay. So I don't know if you want to spoil the ending, but did he jump in the volcano? Or are you <laughs> going to, are you going to suggest that we watch that for ourselves? I would, I would watch it. Okay. I All would right. Watch it for sure. There's also luggage that's involved. That's very important. Oh, well, thanks for that tip. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you so much for appearing on my podcast today. And to all the viewers, Anne's contact information and information about her book are linked in the video description. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for watching the Pure Passion Biz podcast.